I'm a consultant, so I work for myself, which is kind of nice. So I don't have to be at a work at a certain time. So I can get up late, I can get up early, but I love the work I do. So I usually get up early and I first set out and plan out my day and see what I'm going to do. And I prioritize, but on a very exciting day when I'm working on making a game, I'll take the research that I've done. So let's say I'm dealing with a, a certain problem. Like the last game I made was for kids with hemophilia. So I'll look at how much I know about how much we're supposed to be putting in this game that relates to hemophilia. So I might have an interview set up that day to talk with a former patient. And um, so I'll get all the interview questions that I had. I'll talk to them. I'll ask them what's important to them. And either the creative team that's going to be doing the art on the game will also be with me or I'll summarize it and report and hand it to them. But basically on that type of day, I'm basically making sure that the game that we make is suitable and really speaks to the patient's side. They, they're going to be the ones who ultimately are going, to, are going to use it. So it can't be offensive. It has to be challenging enough. Um, and it has to reflect their experience. So it's kind of subtle, but that I really enjoy doing that kind of work, it, it really representing the patient side of making games for health. So once I get a good idea from the patient and I've written up a report that I can share with people, we'll have a meeting and it's often remote. We're all in different places, video conferencing and some are local, but we discuss what we've seen and we get a good idea about the next steps to take. Once we've integrated the feedback and come up with a new version of the game, we'll do some play testing. So it might be with a different group. We may have talked with patients before. We might show it to some doctors and say, is this something that you would find useful in your practice, that you would recommend your patients to play? What do you think about it? And we'll play with them and get their feedback on it and see if we need to improve. And usually, inevitably, every single time we do one of those, we find a way to improve the game, make it more usable and fun. So once I've designed the game and it's ready to go out there, there are lots of different ways that it can get out there. So one is it could be a game that you could download from the internet. That's very easy. Or it might be a board game that you have to go somewhere, you have to order it, you're gonna have to pay postage, wait in the mail for it to come. Or I've also done games with sensors that have some hardware that you put on your fingers that measures your heartbeat to see how stressed you are. You're gonna have to again, wait to get that in the mail and you could get it from recommendations from your doctor or it might be part of your school curriculum where they actually require you to buy this or the school might have bought it itself. Typically with the distribution process, um, someone else is responsible for it. But what I do is because I've been involved ever since the very beginning and I know the project, I start going out and giving talks about it. I tell people how it works, why it's so great. I'll give examples of people using it. And I usually do research on my games to show what they actually do. So I'll present the results of my research at conferences. On a typical work day, I usually try to do something fun and non-work related at the end. I really like to ride horses and I'm lucky enough to be able to ride a horse with my friends. So I go out and I ride my horse. It's a way for me to use my brain in a different way, to think about something else, to use my body and stay fit. And I think that's really important.